Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes. Don't forget to sign on. Starts the 121st painting and the paintings of the company. Um, <laughs> it's been glasses, I'm sorry. Notice the meeting, anyhow. This is our age. <laughs> um, anyone needs a further copy of the notice of meeting? Everyone got those? Good. Could you, uh, dis could you distribute them, please? Excuse me, could you distribute them? Yeah. Right, uh, let us proceed to apologies for absence, which Mary has kindly agreed to bring out. Apologies for absence have been received from Lee Simpson, apologies, Derek Williams, hands up, Jenny Halliday, Darby, David Willis, Gilbert Devonshire Rivers, Robert Brown and Mervyn Way, Devon Association, Matthew Kendall and Chris Toby, Paul Shire, Pat Hickey and Andrew Newin, G and B. John Cooperplate, Guildford, John Croxton and Jane Mason of the Hereford DC, Helen Webb, Ladies Guild, uh, Castorley, Leeds University, Chris Sharp, Lincoln, Alan Ellis, North American Guild, <coughs> David Breskman and Jane Sibson, Peterborough, uh, Derek Sibson, the 
Cumberland Dukes, Mary Jones and Norman Mattingly from Truro, David Mattingly, Andrew Johnson and Peter Nibbler from Winchester and Portsmouth, Andrew Aspel and Susan Welsh from the Yorkshire Association. Mary, thank you very much indeed. Um, I would like to make a slight variation on the order shown in the notice of meeting because as in the last couple of years I would like to give my report in two parts, one looking back at the previous financial year and then one considering the future. So we uh, next move to approving minutes of the meeting and then you'll get the first uh, earful from me and then we'll go on to the company's accounts. So, um, may we consider the uh, minutes of the 2017 AGM? Does anyone want to uh, raise any points of accuracy? On behalf of the board, we, we uh, propose the approval of the minutes. Anyone wish to second that? Thank you, Fred. All in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Okay, those are approved. So, on to the Chairman's account uh, report. You will all no doubt have read the uh, detailed report with the annual accounts, so I'll try to be brief. I'll start with thanks because the meaning well does depend on a combination of a very small team of paid staff and many volunteers. And without the volunteers, it would achieve much less and probably cost a lot more. So thanks first, of course, to Robert, the editor, and his assistant, Will. I honestly believe the quality of the publication, which they continue to develop, is at a very high level. There's been lots of varied and interesting material in the year, some of it occasionally controversial, or very slightly. Uh, the paper has all along supported the need for reform of the council and the efforts being made to achieve this. It may not have seemed like this to reforming members of the council earlier this year, as we published some serious issues about the reform. However, I hope it's recognised that this has given the council time to consider and react to the points raised well before tomorrow's meeting. So, thanks to Robert and Will. <laughs> Our other staff, Chris Perrier, Christine Hooker, and Jackie Tallis, to whom many will have had the uh, pleasure of speaking, uh, she's uh, our admin assistant, they work efficiently and they support one another, which is great. Thanks to the board. Uh, all of whom work hard to sustain and develop the world, the work of the Ringing World Limited, in pursuance of its charitable objectives. We have a range of expertise which, for example, has enabled us to deal comprehensively with the GDPR regulations. Thanks to Wade Fanthorpe, who for 40 years has stored and supplied back issues of the paper. The demand has now fallen off and the service has been dropped. Back numbers are available in various digital forms and issues for the past three years from the office as usual. Thanks to Chris New for his continued production of the diary, which last year made us a tiny £6,300 in profit after a major revision. Uh, next year, we will be considering how much of the project Pickle Dave we can put in, obviously. We sent Liz Barnes for the Christmas card design, which sold out very quickly indeed. Liz, if you're around, I owe you a pint. <laughs> Maybe half a pint. <laughs> Economical chat. Um, Tom Lawrence, uh, working under contract, continues to ensure the integrity of the published pins, and thanks to him. Thanks to our subscribers, and especially our donors. It is your support that has enabled us to continue and develop the publication and invest in its future. I must mention the Ringing World National Youth Contest with another very successful year, managed by Linda, 
uh, but with massive support from Claire McArthur and the Birmingham team. 2018 is her last year in charge, and we welcome David Hull as her successor. It's been a year of consolidating and exploiting our new IT and human resources. Rapid growth of billboard usage and registered users has continued. We've been frustrated in not being able to achieve the streamlining of appeals processing and the closure of appeals.co.uk as we promised last year. Ways of providing the necessary highly specialised technical resource are still under consideration. The financial results were better than budgeted, which is always nice. Advertising with the loss of the Whitechapel uh, Foundry, who were big supporters, um, we, we lost a significant chunk of advertising, and so far, despite our best efforts, have failed to pick up Westley or the new handheld business. The number of subscribers to the printed paper has continued to fall and has not been fully offset by the increase in online subscriptions, which grew healthily, but from a low base. The board is not complacent about this and continues to look to the future, more of which later. And by the way, if you have your uh, paper delivered via a news agent or know anyone who does, please refer them to our admin department. We have an offer available to transfer to direct subscriber. <coughs> Smiths have closed a number of their depots, as a result of which we've lost five news agent subscriptions. Unfortunately, we don't know who they are. Um, and Smiths have also increased their percentage take on the uh, cover price, so that makes it uh, hardly profitable at all to the renewal. So if you just, um, if you know of anyone who will have that news agent subscription, please <coughs> contact our admin department. I think that's enough on the year, so any questions? <coughs> Okay, that's good. Um, finance story. In old language, this is the English extension of account with all the details on pages 18 and 19. So I will refer to those pages. <coughs> I am pleased to report a surplus again this year. In the last three years, the board has successfully taken vigorous measures to reverse the previous years of losses, which have been reserves. That having been achieved, the board will now aim to balance the budget year by year, plus or minus 2% or so. 2017 was at that level, and always better on the plus side. Total income and resources of £285,500 is down on last year. While subscription income is up slightly, following an above inflation rate increase, donations were down with our backdated gift aid claims. Low advertising sales and interest receivable down. <coughs> sales of the diary in Canada have held up and sell well, especially the, the Christmas card, which we reprinted after selling out within a month. A new card is planned for this year, and production of the new diary and the new calendar is well on schedule to make sales from later in the summer. The main difference from last year was the increase in expenditure by £8,000 to just over £280,000. The main increase has been in staff costs, which does not mean that we have given our staff a large pay rise, but does include the editorial assistant for a full year as the board invested in content. As already mentioned, the merchandise costs have increased, but the declining postal subscribers number does mean we print fewer copies each week, and freighting costs are down, even as oil and mail increase prices. Computer and telephony costs are locked down as previous investment has meant lower ongoing expense. Turning to page 12 from the balance sheet, shows the net assets of the company at £197,000, this is about eight months' worth of expenditure. It is above, it's well above the minimum reserves needed for an orderly shutdown, if that ever needed, if that were ever needed. They have been calculated at £110,000. 
But that leaves some further funds available should the board wish to invest in developing the paper or perhaps new ways to fulfill our charitable objectives. <coughs> the next few pages have a few bit more detailed information. But rather than go through those line by line, I'll pause there and ask for any questions from members before formally proposing the adoption of the accounts. <laughs> and if there aren't any questions, we'll move on the agenda. And we'll come back to looking to the future and budget later on. I'll propose here for the adoption of the account. And we'll move someone to second. Move to second. So, all in favour of adoption of the accounts? Any against? And any abstentions? Okay, thank you, it's a lot of relief. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed. <coughs> As you know, um, we have a slight problem with next year's AGM in that our Articles of Association are completely specific that we have to hold an AGM within 15 months of the previous time. Well, the Central Council, having moved the uh, next year's AGM into September, it's just no, sorry. Sorry, you disagree. Yeah, sorry, before I carry through, I'm not aware that the council has taken the decision to move the day to the meeting. We may start that tomorrow, but there's nothing that came to the village for the last week to indicate what we've had before. Okay, um, well, I'll take a point there. Um, so, uh, I, I had. Taken it very much, and I think the board have taken it, but uh, it was going to be postponed. Uh, maybe we need to, well, we'll take the motion as it is and take it on the chin and take the relevant action if, um, if there isn't uh, an AGM next September. Thank you for that. So, what we were up against was whether we had to, uh, we would call an AGM at a separate time. I think we've explained in the notice of meeting what our thinking was. Much easier, much cheaper, and much better. We get more of you if we don't have a specific uh, uh, Ringing World AGM, which is not part of the Central Council AGM. So uh, we consulted the charity commissioners. And they said that they were regarded as just an administrative matter if for one year we wish to go beyond the 15 months, but that if we wish to make a change to our articles, we would have to formally consult them. So um, they having assured us that we could change this year's, uh, next year's AGM on the vote of members at this meeting, we are proposing that the 2019 AGM of the company be held in September. Um, and I think we will proceed with that in the hope that it goes ahead of the Central Council. Um, all in favour? Uh, sorry, sorry, it's been big. Well, very true. I, I have the same thing, but it's a slight different point, which is that if, if the future AGMs are held in September, that's eight, at least eight months after the end of the financial year, which would mean that we, as a company, wouldn't be in a position to discuss any. Uh, it, it would. I'll only just stop. Yes, uh, it would mean that we, as members of the company, wouldn't be in a position to discuss and consider any potentially adverse uh, financial statements until well after the end of the previous financial year. Yeah, and therefore I would wonder whether the board would wish to consider possibly uh, changing the. Company's financial year in the future. It's a better match than AGM held in September. Um, thank you very much. We have considered that. And yes, we don't want to present you with almost a fait accompli and you know, some very stale accounts. So we thought about changing the financial year. We thought we'd leave it for the moment, but at the 2019 AGM update you with the first six months of 2019 as well. Yeah, we really don't want to be presenting some very historical figures to you. Okay, so that being, uh, any other questions on that? Yeah. Nick Alspeed's work. Um, 
if for any reason uh, in the main meeting that the Central Council is, is not, does not move September, yeah. then perhaps you need to put some kind of device on your motion. Yeah, I would have the motion, Chair. Yeah. Um, the, um, the last year's admin committee report, thank you very much, sorry, Charles yeah. Mungle Manager Association. Um, looking at the minutes from last year's Central Council meeting, I see in last year's admin committee report, I have an paragraph. Paragraph two of that report noted that the annual meeting would move to early September of 2019. That appears to be a decision that the Central Council have already made, Chair. Okay. Well, would the uh, President of the Council like to clarify what the position is on that? This is it. Mr. Brown, I am, though, I'd be worried if it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we should be able to make a decision. So, Charles, uh, if, if anybody's got their supplement there, I, I can confer that if they, so on page 12 of the whole supplement, um, the leftmost column, uh, 15A reports, um, there's a it's minutes there about the move of the council meeting to September in 2019. So I can confirm that. Over here. Just wanted to say your um your idea about Caroline's stopping and um your idea of in September showing the first six months <coughs> is a really adequate solution, I think, because actually that's when you do have the possibility to input to something. Once the council are closed, there's not much people can do anyway. So I think that's a, a really good idea, um, rather than having to do lots of bureaucratic stuff to change year ends and so on. If um, you're presenting an older year end, but also saying this is how we're doing in the last six months, I think yeah. that's really good. Thank you very much indeed. Then we move on to a vote on the uh, motion that the 2019 ATM company be held in September. Those in favour? Those against? Any abstainers? One, two, three, four, five, five. six. Six abstainers. Yeah. Well, the motion is carried. <laughs> Next is the uh, appointment of directors, Linda Garton, Richard Wallace, and I retire in rotation and are happy to be considered for re-election. I would like just to say at this point that in February I gave notice to the board that I was not prepared to serve beyond the 2019 AGM. And I thought you should have that information before you consider voting. I am perfectly happy, though, to uh, continue, if you so will, until that AGA. So let's move to the vote. Has anyone not got a voting slip who is entitled to have one? Okay. Thank you for sure. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Great resources didn't allow for that, and there was the further complication that Don Vermeida, who was our independent examiner, merged his business with Langdowns, and uh, during that process we didn't think it uh, a good idea to possibly disrupt it. So the proposal uh, has been made, those in favour. <coughs> Anything against? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Langdowns and BFK are therefore uh, reported. Richards, the budget. This slide briefly lets you know how our budget for this year and how the first quarter is performing against this. That's shown in red performance. 5% increase in subscription rates on average has not yet seen an increased non renewal rate, so we expect subscription income to remain nearly on track with this. You've already mentioned W. H. Smith's um, reduction in service and the increased amount of the power price they keep, um, but as they only sold 13 issues each week, um, now reduced to eight, um, uh, is really having a material effect. Um, the quarter one figures do not often show much trend, and that is the same this year. Our biggest variable is merchandise sales, but that always happens at the end of the year. Costs are continually reviewed, and nothing is spent that isn't needed. Nigel's already mentioned about trying the change in timing of the Central Council meeting, but it did lead the board to discuss changing the company's financial year end. At the moment, we decided to keep it as the 31st of December. Because the, the reform of the Central Council is not certain and settled yet. And changing it to say the 31st of March and then changing it back again would cause unnecessary disruption until things are settled for the long term. As we said, our intention is to bring a half year update performance to next year's September meeting, as well as formally reporting on the full year. Um, and we, he also mentioned that we also hope to look for alternative quotes from the other independent examiners this year. But um, time constraints, including my paid work during the week, uh, means that um, that has been delayed. And I don't really want to promise that it will be happening during this year for certain. Um, again, I'll, I'll stop there unless there's any questions on this year's budget that um, does show a balance. We have a microphone here. Oh, they're going to take over. Hello, I'm Shotgun Kent. So, two uh, questions. I want to budget just for clarity. You mean basically no surplus, no deficit? Yes, Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, spending okay. more than Actually, three <coughs> questions. So, one is there uh, anything you'd like to tell us more about moving forwards, how that's going to then go back into surplus rather than into deficit? This obviously is a trend at the moment. That's one question. And connected to that, because of the September change, it would mean 2019 budget, we wouldn't have any knowledge of what the plans were until the September when you're nine months through the 19 budget, yeah. which is a little bit awkward. So I just wondered if you could tell us more about how that information might be shared and, and what you're thinking 2019 might look like. 
I mean, as I said, the first time around, our plan is to sort of make plus or minus two percent each year. Um, we do realise that expenses naturally keep on rising. Uh, the postage and printing, um, if we go online, I mean, instead of paying the um, app store fee and that sort of thing, um, so that doesn't save as much as it can. Um, but um, and if we get someone on board that can help with advertising and is doing that, um, we might be able to increase income. Um, I mean, one of the survey says you do want to hire that high increase in your school subscription levels, uh, sort of high inflation right there. I mean, we did it this year a bit because um, we paid extra printing for the big full page front covers and that sort of thing. Um, but our intention isn't to increase the subscription levels too high each year. So, um, again, we must be keeping track of costs and um, whether that's the accountancy or, or the admin. Um, Sort of thing as well, that's the intention. Um, as to the budget, um, yes, without a money meeting, it's, it's going to be difficult to present there. I guess we can try and do the feature uh, sometime in January or February in the publication itself to let people know what the situation is or how to do a circulation, direct via the CC members, um, circular email list. Um, that's not something we considered in detail about the practicality of. Uh, Completely how September meeting will let us keep you informed of things. Um, is there any kind of any kind of agreement that you will be uh, making sure you don't go to deficit? I mean, it sounds like you might need to be an increase in subs because <coughs> you pay for this actually costing you to produce them. Sorry, there are, we can't guarantee we're not going into deficit. Um, so would you plan to go into deficit? No. No, um, but what we've always said is that if we came up with a good investment opportunity during the year, uh, we could eat into our reserves towards that. And in terms of the operational budget, we will aim to balance it. Uh, but as I admitted last year, and, and will admit again this year, um, the fact that we've turned out where we are isn't because all the budget items seem to be turned out accurately where we expected them to be, but more of a, more of a sort of, um, I won't use the word random, but uh, a, a process by which we won and lost in various different areas. And, and you know, one, one of the concerns is what will the number of subscriptions be? Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about that when I talk about the future. Your point is well taken that we can give you half year accounts in September, but we can't give you the budget. You're not required to approve the budget, but we recognise that you will be interested in it. And my main concern is around the government that you are saying, you know, nobody knows what, what will happen. The budgets, you know, yeah. well, they're out of date, that's you write them. That's mm -hmm. right. I'm not so concerned on that level. It's more that your intention would be to always go for a balanced budget and you would be doing what you could do in order to achieve that, unless, as you say, there's a particular investment. Yeah. <laughs> Three years ago, we reversed, I think it was six or seven years of losses, and, and we don't want to go back. Okay. Any other questions on the budget? Okay, then we move on again. I'd now like to spend a little bit of time talking about the future of Bringing World Limited. So we're not just talking about the paper, but at the Bringing World Limited AGM, we're talking about the company. So the board continues to look for new ways of fulfilling our charitable objects, which also it's currently reviewing. But the paper, the youth contest, and billboards remain the identified ways forward. The board has another away date band in June to consider this further. Subscriptions and donations are the major components of our income, and we aim to keep subscriptions as low as possible to maximise our outreach to the exercise by cutting any unnecessary costs and keeping the price down. I've already mentioned the possibility of streamlining the fields processing <coughs> when resources can be found and this would achieve a significant ongoing cost saving. The office lease comes up for renewal next January, and we had to give notice in October this year if we wish to terminate it. We now have the technology for operating without an office, and are using the technology, 
but inclined to the view that production of the paper does need some face-to-face -face discussions. We are therefore in negotiations with our Andover landlord about renewal. Robert is uh, carrying out those negotiations. But we've also looked at local service offices as an alternative. And in fact, Robert has taken his staff to look at some in Andover. I think it'd be fair to say they weren't ideal, but it gave them an, an idea to the staff as to uh, what, what would be involved, uh, the pluses and the minuses. Um, to move out of Andover, which um, is not an ideal location, would unfortunately be likely to cause the loss of some of our valued office staff, and we're not therefore looking at that at the moment. The rate of loss of paper subscriptions in recent years, if maintained at the current level, is sustainable with modest rate rises and continued cost cutting for the next few years. However, the high age profile of our subscribers, as revealed by the survey, does indicate the possibility of a cliff edge in subscriptions at some time in the future. Uh, just tracking back to the survey, we had an incredible 3,500 responses, half or so from subscribers, half from not subscribers. We asked about age, and the age profile of the non subscribers was about 10 years younger than that of the subscribers. In retrospect, we should have introduced more granular granularity into the age questions that we asked and not just said 65 plus. So um, <laughs> it, it makes us a bit nervous. Uh, but so far, so good. But the board will be keeping a very close eye on, on any acceleration in, in loss of paper subscriptions. The, uh, the online subscriptions are going up at a good rate, but uh, from a rather low base. I think the latest figure is we have 311 online subscriptions. Big savings in postage could be achieved by publishing only fortnightly. The board is working to develop plans for a fortnightly publication, which it agrees has to be more than two weekly issues stuffed together. Another motivation for looking at fortnightly is that interpreting the survey answers it might attract subscribers who do not want a weekly, whilst not losing those who indicated they would prefer to continue with a weekly, but would subscribe to a fortnightly if it became necessary. With the extensive use of Bellboard for performance publication, the question as to how long we should continue to print the performances must be considered. However, no precipitate action will be taken and there will be wide consultation if that becomes a serious proposal. I would remind you, and we stick by this, the board has said we will give at least 12 months notice of any intention to change the frequency of publication. The way in which the council develops and its expressed wish to communicate directly and frequently with its members may affect the future of the paper. We are in an early stage of discussions with the council and would hope to be instrumental in any such member communications. The board is confident that Ringing World Limited and its publication will continue to play a major role in the exercise and that the company is in a good position to respond to future challenges and opportunities. As I have said, I shall not serve on the board beyond the 2019 AGM, which will be my fifth as chairman. There are other long-serving members of the board who have indicated their wish to step down before long. We would therefore be very pleased to hear from anyone who has the time, energy, skills, and particularly new ideas to help take the enterprise forward. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chris did say I was aiming at a personal best. <laughs> let, let, let that not to stifle any questions, and we will move on to any other business. Beth, sorry, was there a question? Yeah. No, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other business? 